last lap in race for the White House. Swing states hold key to 2024 win. Will Trump take the oval again? Kamala's final push for the White House. Pennsylvania's vote to tip the scales. Trump's triumph or Kamala's historic rise. Ready, set, go. The final stretch. And it is all systems go in the biggest American election of our lifetime. The stakes are impossibly high. And viewer, I know you probably don't have the time to watch day-long coverage of the American election. And that's why as polling begins right now in the United States to decide if it's going to be Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, I am going to tell you everything you need to know before the polling actually kicks off. Thanks as always for being with me, Shiv, here on Five Live. And the decision on whether it's going to be President Donald Trump or President Kamala Harris will be decided over the next 15 hours, viewer, as polls open on the east coast of the United States. Polling has begun in the grand American election. The race for America has begun. The race to the White House in what has been one of the most polarizing, one of the most mesmerizing election campaigns led by Kamala Harris on the one side and former President Donald Trump on the other. A world at war, a world drenched in conflict has its eyes fixed on who the new commander-in-chief of the United States of America is going to be. And as polls open in Charlottesville, Virginia, polls open on the East Coast, it's now down to the wire. The latest data coming in from the swing states suggests that things are neck and neck. Even the opinion polls are divided. Exit polls, uh, data will be coming in overnight. We will, of course, be reporting that to you first. But right now, Americans in their millions are exercising their franchise to choose between the two people you see on your screen right now, arguably the two most famous Americans of the day, Kamala Harris, the current vice president, and Donald Trump, former president of the United States. The race is neck and neck, like I said, with the percentage split at 49 to 51. Will Trump make a comeback or will Kamala make history by became, becoming the first woman president of the United States of America. Well, all the speculation, all the analysis will finally get a chance to take a breath because the people are now making their choice. Take a look at everything you need to know as polling kicks off. It is a D-Day in the United States. Hours before voting starts on Tuesday, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump fired their last shots at each other in their final speeches. The two candidates focused on Pennsylvania, the battleground state, with the highest electoral votes of 19 in the last lap. Over the past four years, Kamala has orchestrated the most egregious betrayal that any leader in American history has ever inflicted upon our people. She's violated her oath of office. She's eradicated our sovereign border and unleashed an army of gangs and criminal migrants from prisons and jails. I've spent my life fighting for people who have been hurt and counted out, but who never stop believing that in our country, anything is possible. The Harris and Trump campaigners have spent heavily on the seventh battleground states, which will decide who will become the next president of the United States. According to opinion polls, the swing states are now on a knife edge, with the two locked in a neck-and-neck -neck fight. 
What happens if neither candidate is able to reach the majority of 270 electoral votes? This deadlock would trigger a contingent election in which the House of Representatives select the president on January 6th. The last contingent election took place in 1824. If Trump wins, it would mark the first time in over a century that a president has served two non-consecutive terms. And if Harris wins, she would become the first female U.S. president. Either way, America is set to create history. With Geeta Mohan, Bureau Report, India Today. And right down to the wire, the highlights of the war of words between Kamala Harris and Trump have really hit all the marks in terms of virality. And remember, in the United States, unlike here in India, the candidates are allowed to speak. They are allowed to address rallies and campaigns right down to the last minute. Here's the very latest of that crossfire. With your vote, we're going to win Pennsylvania and we're going to defeat Kamala and those, la or those radical left, what they're doing to our country. The momentum is on our side. Our campaign has tapped into the ambitions, the aspirations, and the dreams of the American people. And we know it is time for a new generation of leadership in America. And I am ready to offer that leadership as the next president of the United States. So tomorrow you have to stand up and tell Kamala that you've had enough. You're not going to take it anymore. You're the most incompetent vice president we've ever had. And Joe Biden was the worst president in the history of our country. Kamala, you're fired. Get the hell out of here. You're fired. And we have an opportunity in this election to finally turn the page on a decade of politics driven by fear and division. We are done with that. We're done. We're done. We're exhausted with it. And Pittsburgh, we are not going back. We are ready for a president who knows the true measure of a leader is not based on who you beat down. It is based on who you lift up. Over the past four years, Kamala has orchestrated the most egregious betrayal that any leader in American history has ever inflicted upon our people. She's violated her oath of office. She's eradicated our sovereign border and unleashed an army of gangs and criminal migrants from prisons and jails, insane asylums and mental institutions from all around the world, from Venezuela and the Congo in Africa, stealing countless American lives. And these are rough, these are rough customers that are coming, much rougher than almost anybody in this room. And instead of stewing over an enemy's list, I will spend every day working on my to-do list. full of priorities to improve your life, because ours is not a fight against something. It is a fight for something. It is a fight for the future, and it is a fight for freedom. So as we bring you this broadcast, the people of America are making their choice between Trump uh, and Kamala. But what are the issues on which people are actually voting? One of the biggest is, of course, the crumbling economy, jobs, record unemployment in the United States. The Republicans uh, will launch our crypto cure, uh, cryptocurrency. Democrats say moderate tax increase for the wealthy. Then you've got the very, uh, you know, ill-tempered issue of immigration. It has become one of the uh, you know, the, the most hostile battlegrounds between the Democrats and the Republicans. The Republicans have pledged to implement mass deportations from the United States. The Democrats have talked about constructing a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border. Hmm, where have we heard that before? Then you've got the uh, also very hostile issue and polarizing issue of abortion rights. The Republicans say might veto 
any anti-abortion law. Democrats restore nationwide abortion rights. So these are some of the issues. There are, of course, other issues, including uh, international relations, health care, uh, uh, Medicare cover, which affect people in their millions across the United States at this point of time. But these are just the broad issues on which people are understood to be voting today. Well, in his final campaign push, Donald Trump raised the charge of election fraud once again. Trump against the crooked country and demonic Democrats is how he put it and called for using only paper ballots. Where have we heard that before, you're wondering? Is he setting the stage to cry foul if he loses? Will he or won't he accept America's decision if it does not go in his favor? That's the big question citizens, analysts and poll watchers are asking. In his last pitch for support in Pennsylvania, Trump reiterated his election fraud charge. They want to, they want to, they are fighting so hard to steal this damn thing. Look at what's going on. Look at what's going on in your state. Every day, they're talking about extending hours and stuff. What the, who ever heard of this stuff? We should have one day voting and paper ballots. Recently, a viral video showed a Kentucky voter claiming he could not select Donald Trump on a voting machine. The video showed that the machine did not indicate the voter's selection and eventually selected Vice President Kamala Harris. The Kentucky Attorney General's office did confirm the glitch, saying it was a voter error that is easily preventable and did not impact the voter's final ballot. But the video did raise concerns about the integrity of elections. Our country is a crooked country, okay? It's a crooked country, and we're going to make it straight. We're going to make it straight, and it's not an easy thing to do. Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris has urged voters to not fall for Trump's tactic on election fraud. So here we are on the Sunday before the election, and I would ask, in particular, people who have not yet voted to not fall for his tactic which I think includes um, suggesting to people that if they vote, their vote won't matter. Suggesting to people that somehow the integrity of our voting system is not intact so that they don't vote. Trump continues to falsely claim his 2020 loss to Democratic President Joe Biden was the result of widespread fraud in multiple states that Trump lost, while he and his supporters have spread baseless claims about his current election in Pennsylvania. Well, if Trump is defeated, he will not accept the result uh, and will do everything he can to try to prevent that count on, I think it's January 5th, this year, uh, where they're certifying the presidential electoral votes. Uh, the difference between 2024 and 2020 is that he's not president. And he doesn't have the kind of levers of power that he was fully able uh, to exercise to try to prevent a Biden victory uh, in the electoral college. In a neck and neck fight, charges, counter charges, and misinformation is flying thick and fast. Bureau Report, India Today. And the only indicator of what a dead heat things are looking like between Kamala and Trump uh, is in a series of opinion polls being done by various media organizations and pollsters in the United States. And let me just take you through some of them to show you how close things are. Atlas Intel, it's 49 to 50 uh, between, uh, between Kamala and Trump. Let's go to the second one. Ipsos Reuters, 50 to 48 between Kamala and Trump. That's the second opinion poll that we're tracking. The CNN SSRD poll uh, makes it 
completely neck and neck at 47-47 between Kamala and Trump. The New York Times Siena College opinion poll gives it to 48-48% between Kamala and Trump. Each one of them is absolutely dead heat. Emerson College's opinion poll puts it at 49-49% to 49%, uh, in their opinion poll. And finally, uh, the 538 ABC poll puts it at 48-47, to 47, giving Kamala Harris just a slight bit of an edge. Now, let's show you what's happening in the key states of Pennsylvania and Michigan now. First, let's tell you why Pennsylvania is so crucial, and that's where polling uh, is taking place. Fight for 19 electoral votes makes it a key swing state, a key swing state. This could hold the key to who becomes the next president. It's a tight race between Republican and the Democratic parties here. Uh, it always has been a very, very important key swing state. Uh, both candidates are aggressively campaigning in Pennsylvania. They've had tailor-made messages for the state of Pennsylvania, which is important, uh, you know, all around the board. Since 1948, no Democrat has won the presidency without Pennsylvania. So if Kamala Harris is to be the president, she has to win Pennsylvania. Now let's tell you about why Michigan is also very, very important. Michigan, the fight for, unlike 16 in Pennsylvania, the 15, no, not a small number, electoral votes make it another key swing state in this phase uh, of the election. In 2016, Trump won the state by fewer than 11,000 votes. Absolutely wafer-thin margin of victory in Michigan. It's a tight race here as well between the Republicans and the Democratic Party. So things are... On a razor's edge, both Kamala and Trump held 46 poll rallies in Michigan alone. 46 each poll rallies in Michigan alone shows you why things are really, really uh, so, so tight. The stakes are incredibly, impossibly, eye-wateringly high between the two contenders. Now, the swing state of Pennsylvania, where opinion polls uh, have an average of Kamala Harris holding 48%, and Donald Trump with a slight edge at 19%. It has 19 electoral votes. In 2020, remember, the Democrats obviously won, uh, won in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is from the New York Times. Then you've got the swing state of Georgia, where opinion polls are giving Kamala Harris on average 40% as opposed to 49%. Again, a slight edge to Donald Trump. There are 16 electoral votes here. Once again, in 2020, the Democrats won the state of Georgia. Then you've got the swing state of North Carolina. Opinion polls giving an average of 48% to Kamala Harris and 48% as well to Donald Trump. There are 16 electoral votes here. The Republicans had won uh, this uh, North Carolina. Then there's the swing state of Michigan, which I just showed you, where opinion polls uh, in the state are averaging about 48% for, uh, for, for both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. 15 electoral votes here. The Democrats, like I said, had won this state last time. Then, uh, you know, moving towards the West, where you've got Arizona, opinion polls giving 46% to Kamala Harris and 50% to Donald Trump, 11 electoral votes in that particular state. And India Today has reporters on the ground in the United States speaking to the power players and the big players in this election campaign. For instance, Neera Tandon, she's President Biden's senior advisor, and we had a quick conversation with her as well in this final bit of the campaign. Who is going to be better for India, right? I mean, mm -hmm. is it Donald Trump? Is it Vice President Kamala Harris? What would you like to tell them? I'd say that we, uh, if we elect Kamala Harris tomorrow, we will have the first president ever who visited India as a child, who has Indian relatives, who ex experienced what it's like to really know India from that perspective, not just as a geopolitical ally, but really from the bottom up. I mean, I feel like I have a different kind of sense of India myself. From having gone there every few years, talking to my relatives, seeing my WhatsApp with all my Indian relatives on it. You know, you just experience things in a very different way. And I think her added understanding of India from that perspective will be is an unfathomable asset in the bilateral relationship between the United States and India. And I think India will be very proud 
to have a daughter of India as president of the United States. And let's bring in India Today's foreign affairs editor Geeta Mohan is live with us from Florida this morning. Geeta, good morning. The big day for the United States. Hopefully by the end of today there will be some clarity. The weapons have all been kept aside now. It's over to the American voter. How are things looking? A dead heat opinion poll after opinion poll averaging out and making this one of the most neck and neck elections, Geeta. Well, absolutely, Shiv. This is going to be one of the most interesting elections ever fought in the history of the United States of America. Having said that, we're in Florida. Just a moment from now, uh, polling will begin in uh, in Florida. Florida, the polling begins a little later. It was quite dark. It's only opening up now. The skies have opened up now. Um, and around 7 a.m., which is about moments from now, uh, polling will begin here. In, uh, in in Florida, I am at the West Palm Beach, uh, exactly where uh, Donald Trump is, Mar-a-Lago, not so uh, far from where I stand right now. And he uh, will be going and uh, casting his ballot at the Morton and Barbara Mandel Recreation Center. Uh, that is That falls within his home precinct. And so we'll be there in a while from now. Uh, it is quite interesting. Before coming to Florida, Shiv, a lot of people were saying and their reports uh, that there is a, a, a mini lockdown kind of a situation over here because uh, we're expecting protests to take place um, when Trump appears. And then uh, the, after the whole day, there is also going to be the entire watch party uh, that uh, Donald Trump is going to hold for his people and a lot of his supporters. Uh, and uh, once the watch, and it will be similar to the last two times, there is a watch party, they're all together, and he's yet to concede the last election, will he concede, should it be an adverse result, is something we'll have to wait and see, and if that happens, uh, the entire, uh, the security paraphernalia of, uh, of uh, West Palm Beach is quite prepared, uh, although uh, Republican leaders are saying that there are going to be no riots, Situation, but there are certainly going to be protests, uh, mostly anti-Trump protests. So let's wait and see what really pans out for us today here in Florida. Uh, have there, uh, you know, are there special arrangements this time, Geeta? Uh, you know, considering what happened the last time and the way things actually stretched on, it became a, a you know, a nightmare on Capitol Hill as well. Uh, you know, what new arrangements are being made this time? Well, uh, uh, absolutely, not just here. Uh, there are arrangements, and we will be uh, going around the city and uh, and taking our viewers through what's really happening and how is the administration prepared over here in the city uh, with regards to the protests and the post poll results as well. Uh, but apart from that, uh, there, there are massive preparations in uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, they've already started putting up those uh, uh, massive uh, 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 canvas boards that uh, they put up the. Uh, 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 to ensure that you know there's no vandalization like last time, uh, they have barricaded many of the uh, critical areas. Uh, they did not anticipate the kind of violence they saw, witnessed last time around. So this time, um, expect a lot of preparedness and preparation. Although most of the Trump supporters might not really turn up in Washington D.C., mm. it was different last time around because Trump was in power. He was sitting in the Oval Office. Uh, when the yeah. results came and and later when you know the oath taking ceremony was to take place uh, but uh, they're not expecting the same kind of uh, situation they are expecting trouble should the uh, should the results not be in favor of donald trump so preparations are on here in florida as also in washington dc and in new york uh, because whichever way the results go we'll be we're told that donald trump could go to trump towers in new york yeah. as well uh, a day after, uh, but for now, uh, things are heating up. It's a, it's an interesting day. Uh, the early mail-in votes have shown that numbers uh, are, are quite significantly in favor of Republicans as well. Yes. Uh, so uh, it uh, for for an incumbent doesn't, and she might not be an incumbent, but the party is doesn't look good. Uh, but then again, you know, it's all about the swing states, share and we'll be breaking that down for our viewers as well. What are the numbers? How the numbers stack up? Right now, we're showing uh, a, a, a Democratic uh, win, so to say, because Pennsylvania is what we've given to Democrats since it's Democratic leaning. Absolutely. But if Pennsylvania turns, Shiv, 
then uh, then it's Donald Trump all the way. It's going to be one hell of a day of coverage of, from the U.S. election. Geeta, have a fabulous day. Drink lots of water. It's going to be a long one for you. Uh, and I hear it's pretty warm down there in Palm Beach. And remember that uh, the Geeta, her team on the ground, and all of us are going to be live, uh, you know, till midnight and beyond tonight as we continue to track uh, the, uh, you know, how polling is going in the United States. Overnight, there will be clarity, there will be exit polls, and first thing tomorrow morning, you'll see, hopefully, a sense of what the result of this election is. Now, Rohit Sharma, also our man on the ground in the United States, spoke to uh, spoke to Indian origin American actor Purna Jagannathan. You remember her from movies like Delhi Belly, House of Cards, the show. She's endorsed Kamala Harris very strongly. Here's an excerpt from that conversation. You know, when, when a lot of people talk about this election, you know, and, and I've talked to a lot of Indian American leaders and, and voters and volunteers, yes. uh, there's a Desi factor that everybody's talking about, you know, Indian American voters, and, and they could yeah. see this election one way or the other. Uh, what has your experience been, especially because you live in California, a lot of Indian people live there, you know, what are, what's, what's on their mind right now? It, you know, have they voted? Are they voting for Kamala Harris? What have you picked up on? I am uh, amazed at that this is probably the first election where not only the Indian American, but I was phone banking um, with the Korean Americans yesterday. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just hundreds of people, um, but it is groups of um, people with immigrant ties uh, in, in our communities and the Asian Pacific uh, Islander communities that are getting together. And uh, there's, there's two ways. I think the campaign has done a great job of organizing uh, the Asian American Pacific uh, Islander vote and reaching out to us. Um, and the voter population is responding to that call. And also the amount of Indian Americans, especially Indian American women who are in politics right now and on the ground right now and can jump on Zoom calls and can jump on for resources to help us navigate everything that's going on. Um, that has exploded. I was just in Wisconsin last weekend, surrounded by uh uh, Ms. Harris's aides and just like their commitment to democracy. You know, we've, we've, we've seen us in, you know, doctor positions and lawyer positions and now in entertainment, but the force we have in politics cannot be underestimated. And they are, they are galvanizing us and they see themselves in the democratic process or inviting us to see ourselves in, in the process as well. And here's a quick wrap of the best viral moments coming out of this final uh, phase in this election before polling kicks in. It's been a high-pitched battle from the get-go. Here are some of the slightly more light-hearted moments from what has been an otherwise all-out hostile campaign. Democratic nominee Kamala Harris took some time uh, to go door-to-door -door campaigning in Pennsylvania and requested people for their support. She shared this video on her social media. This is the actual door-to-door -door campaigning that you don't see very often. Meanwhile, Trump released a new campaign song ahead of the finale. The video features Trump's vocal supporters like Tulsi Gabbard, Vivek Ramaswamy, Elon Musk and others. In the video, Trump's famous slogan, Make America Great Again, reigns supreme. November 5th, 2024, it will be Liberation Day in America. We all salute the same great American flag. Our best days are yet to come. Kamala Harris shared a post for her mother on social media in her heartfelt this uh, tweet. She credited her mother, who is uh, Shamala Gopalan, an Indian, for her achievements. Harris shared the black and white picture on X and wrote, My mother, Dr. Shamala Gopalan Harris, came to the United States from India alone at the age of 19. Her courage and determination made me who I am today. What about swings? But there's a big twist in the White House race. Former independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. urged supporters not to vote for him, but for Republican candidate Donald Trump. The endorsement comes after Bob Kennedy Jr.'s bid to remove himself from Wisconsin and Michigan ballots were denied.
free speech is a prison. Hey, everybody, a lot of people are asking me if they live in a red state or a blue state, should they still be voting for me? What about swing states? The answer is easy, no. No matter what state you live in, you should be voting for Donald Trump. And then there was this viral image of a woman dressed as a handmaid voting in North Carolina. This comes after the Handmaid's Tale writer Margaret Atwood cryptically urged women to cast a vote with a repost of a Handmaid's Tale post on Twitter. And let's get a quick word in from India today. It's Rohit Sharma who's on the ground. We've been playing out for you many of those exclusive conversations he's been having, uh, you know, with influencers and some of the big voices on the campaign trail as well. Uh, Rohit, uh, this is the final. It's the final day. How's it looking? What's the mood like? Uh, you know, not long now. Everyone can breathe easy. We will hopefully have an answer. It won't be a protracted uh, you know, sort of uh, counting, uh, counting procedure. But given how things are looking in terms of the data, Rohit, neck and neck opinion poll numbers, do you think it's going to be pretty smooth today? It's going to take a while, Rohit. Well, look, we are right now, and I'll tell you, tell you where we are, Shiv. We are at one of the earliest voting centers in Washington, D.C. They opened up at 6.30 a.m. We were the first ones to get here. Uh, we talked to a few voters there, and I can tell you something that I've picked up on here. People are in, this is a very blue state. This is a very blue county there where we are. People are excited to vote in this uh, election. They've seen uh, everything that we were playing on. They've, talk, they've talked about, their fa they've talked to their families about who they want to vote for. They've discussed a lot of things. But at the end of it all, this is the day that matters. And for now, a lot of people who are coming in are early voters, you know, who, who are basically trying to make sure that they get to vote before they get into work. Uh, some of them are getting handed some of the sample ballots that we've shown on India Today's exclusive. You know, these, when the people come in, they get these ballots. They look at the, you know, the candidates. They're also handing out some of those uh, pamphlets which tell you why they should be voting for Trump or Kamala Harris. So it is going to be neck and neck. But I think a lot of people walking in into the election center right now are voting with their gut feeling. They've been holding on you know, for such a long time. They could have you know, mailed in their ballot. They could have done early voting. But they waited till last minute to vote. And these are the voters, Shiv, that will decide who becomes the next president of the United States. Very interesting. We're going to have to see how it actually plays out. All we can really do now is track the polling as it takes place. We will wait for that exit poll. And like I said, both Rohit and Geeta will be part of our live coverage to tell all of our viewers till midnight and beyond India time is when that coverage will continue. And Rohit and his team will be bringing us everything live from the ground and those counting centers. In the wake of a wave of Khalistani attacks on Hindu temples in Canada, including two that happened in the last 48 hours, over a thousand members of the Canadian Hindu community gathered in Brampton and Surrey, which are Khalistani bastions, to counter protest against the victimization and the state protection of Khalistani terrorists. The protests, as you can see, these images took place outside Brampton's Hindu Sabha Mandir, which came under attack, one of Canada's largest temples. Protesters demanded safety and accountability from a Trudeau government that has been falling over itself to protect Khalistanis and to shield them using Canadian laws. Protesters in Surrey also gathered outside the Sri Lakshmi Narayan Mandir to outrage against the Surrey police's handling of the incident. Protesters vowed to take the matter to higher authorities. Many legal cases have been filed as well, stressing that such incidents cannot be overlooked or treated lightly. Well, India-Canada ties have continued to worsen, and the very fact that Khalistani thugs uh, thought that they could get away with such a brazen attack on people of Indian origin at their temples in two places in Canada yesterday shows that there is absolutely no fear of any applicable Canadian laws which only appear to be working in their favor. Two armed Khalistani mobs were prowling outside Canadian Gurudwaras last night, just a day after those Hindu temples were targeted. But so far, 
there's been total silence on Khalistani involvement by the Trudeau government, with only placeholder vague statements on these attacks issued so far. A pro-Khalistan mob assaulting Hindu devotees in Brampton and Surrey in Canada inside the Hindu Sabha and Lakshmi Narayan temples. Leading to widespread protests that night by the Hindu community. Hindu protesters assembled outside the targeted temples and chanted Jai Shri Ram and Khalistan Murdabad slogans. ये बड़ी ही दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण घटना है और ये घटनाएं जो हैं कनाडा में वो लगातार बढ़ रही हैं। We are deeply hurt as Hindu community what has happened here yesterday and we have come here in support of Hindu community. The Khalistani extremists are emboldened with or with a beyond belief and uh, this is just one um, incident which was captured by media because it was happening at a at a temple. A scary escalation soon ensued after armed pro-Khalistan thugs were seen prowling outside Canadian Gurdwaras. Meanwhile, the Trudeau government's perceived collusion with pro-Khalistan elements surfaced. A police sergeant in the Peel Police Department, Harinder Sohi, was caught on camera in the mob that attacked Hindu devotees in Brampton. An image of Sohi also surfaced in a pro-Khalistan rally from October, which was organized to target Prime Minister Narendra Modi. India, meanwhile, has kept the pressure on the Trudeau government. After Modi, External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar slammed the Canadian government for giving a free run to pro-Khalistani groups. Political space today, which is being given to extremist forces there. So we believe in freedoms. We also believe freedom should not be misused. And uh, have you had a talk about it? Exactly on the lines which I've spoken. Australia too has slammed the Diwali attack on Hindus by pro-Khalistani thugs. People have a right to be safe and uh, uh, respected, uh, regardless of who they are in our country. That's the, the essence of our multicultural democracy. Uh, we've made clear our concerns about the allegations under investigations. Uh, we've said that we respect Canada's judicial process. Um. Who killed the Indian government? Who killed the Indian The Trudeau government has so far refused to see the role of pro-Khalistani groups in this flare-up. Are India and Canada relations crossing a point of no return? With Deepak Punj in Brampton, Canada, Bureau Report, India Today. And Canadian journalist Daniel Boardman, who warned that India-Canada relations could worsen in the final year of Justin Trudeau's term, well, his remarks have turned out to be pretty prescient, haven't they? Here's him in conversation with India Today's Pooja Shali earlier today. Daniel, first, I have to appreciate you've been constantly going on the ground and speaking to directly people, not just opinions and views. What did you see when you went to Brampton? Because this was the Hindu community that I don't think has congregated in a manner like this ever before in Canada. What is your assessment? First, what did you see? Yeah, I mean, I, I got there a bit early uh, to set up to sort of watch the whole thing develop. Um, and it was really sort of an atmosphere. Uh, and many, many, you know, sort of Hindus were coming in. And, and there were big boxes of uh, Indian flags and Canadian flags uh, that people uh, were handing out. And everyone was getting pretty uh, patriotic. And then, you know, the um, there, there were other communities of support. I mean, um, I, I'm sorry for butchering the name, but there was a the, the Sikh Hindu Unity Coalition. That's coalition, good. Mm -hmm. I might have butchered the name. They were there. Uh, I met them. 
Um, there were a couple of Jewish organizations, Tafsik, One Global Voice, uh, uh, Iranians, a uh, political former political prisoner from Iran, Salman Sima, made a speech there. So mostly, uh, you know, large, you know, thousands of Hindus. I couldn't get a whole count because there was like thousands in, there was thousands in front, there was thousands in behind. Um, and if you've ever seen the property, it's gigantic. So head counts were hard because everyone was kind of packed. And um, it kind of just started. People kind of, you know, uh, got in and like, Someone went Jai Shri Ram. Other one people went Jai Shri Ram. So uh, the atmosphere kind of started. Um, the the Jewish organization Tafsik they had brought um, the executive director Amir Epstein and brought a sound system for the the community to use. So then that got set, set up and uh, yeah, it was um, it just uh, you know a bit of an atmosphere. And then you know there were some policy directions. You you uh, had uh, Rashab from Kona on the organizers. And uh, if I could boil it down, they want. Um, the, the government and the police to address the Khalistani issue by name, Khalistan. It's a problem. And Canadian Hindus on social media are attempting now to mobilize, organize, and try and boycott all businesses that are either owned or sympathetic to Khalistanis and Khalistani groups to try and hurt them from the inside. In my view, that's perhaps one of the best ways to go, at least in the foreseeable future. We'll keep track of how India responds on this developing story.